Welcome back guys. This is the fourth video about vectors um, and we are talking about generalizing the ideas to um, beyond two dimensions, up to three dimensions, and even as many as n dimensions. Now before we get started on that, I just want to give you some motivation for it. Um, a lot of people say, why go beyond three-dimensional space or even four-dimensional? They'll, they'll be comfortable with space-time, but anything beyond four dimensions um, bothers them. Uh, actually, we can have as many dimensions as we want. Every dimension represents what we're thinking of as an independent variable, a variable that's not really affected by the other variables. Um, like the x direction and the y direction, those are completely independent of each other. Um, and that has something to do with perpendicular vectors. Um, we're not going to get into that here. Um, but um, just know that there are lots of things that go beyond uh, three or four dimensions. Um, let, just for example, the temperature in this room, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of factors that affect the temperature. I could say the temperature in this room is affected by, you know, the thermostat setting and um, how much, uh, what is it called, in the walls. Um, uh, I'm, I'm losing the word right now. Um, but uh, how much in insulation I have in my house. It could also just very simply depend on, um, temperature T could depend on X, Y, and Z, so three spatial coordinates. And it could also depend on time. And that's giving us this, there's, so we've got four variables here. And for each of those four variables, I'm getting a fifth variable, temperature. Um, I'm, I want to use capital T again, but I've used it to name my function, so I'm going to use the letter W to represent temperature. Um, if I wanted to graph this, the domain would be a subset of four-dimensional space, and the range is a real number. So if I want to graph it, I have to be in five-dimensional space. Um, can't really do that because we can't see and we can't see beyond three dimensions. Um, so there is a very good reason that we talk about n-dimensional space. Um, there are also lots of problems in engineering um, and the sciences uh, where you've got you know 15 independent variables. You might be optimizing some function that depends on those using matrices and a lot of the math that we talk about in linear algebra. Um, so n dimensions, n dimensional space is really important. But I just wanted to show you how everything that we've talked about so far goes from beyond 2D to 3D and as many as nd. So component form. In 2D, let's say we've got a vector u. It can be represented by components u1 and u2. You can imagine how that extends to 3D. Here I had an x component and a y component. If I go to 3D, now I'm going to have an x component, oops, a y component, and a z component. When I go to nd, I can't really call it x, y, and z anymore but I'm going to have one component for every dimension. So I'll have a first component and a second component and a third component and a fourth component all the way up to an nth component. Um, and this is fine. The mathematics is going to work nicely here just like it works nicely here. Um, we also talked about the vector from P to Q. From P to Q. In 2D, my vector, or my point P might be x1, y1, and my point Q might be x2, y2. Then the vector PQ, as we've seen, comes from taking terminal minus initial. We do x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. That's 2D. In 3D, instead of points having an x, y, and a z, my, or instead of points having an x and y, my points are going to have an x, a y, and a z. So P might be represented by x1, y1, z1, and Q might be represented by x2, y2, z2. And you can imagine how we come up with PQ again. It's still terminal minus initial. We're going to do x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. 
Now for the next one, it's a little bit harder to use, stay consistent with my notation because I'm running out of letters. I mean, and I don't know which n letters I'm using. Um, so in n dimensions, I'm going to use slightly different notation. Don't let it bother you. I'm going to call the point P, um, P1, P2, all the way through P sub n. It has n components. And Q has component, or excuse me, coordinates. These are coordinates of P, not components of P. And Q has coordinates Q1, Q2, all the way through Qn. So the vector PQ starts at Q and ends or starts at P and ends at Q. We do still do terminal minus initial. It looks a little different, the subscripts, but the idea is the same. I'm taking the, the first one and I'm subtracting the first one. Terminal minus initial. And then I do terminal minus initial again. And then terminal minus initial again. And we keep going until we get n of them. Terminal minus initial again. And that's the vector PQ in n-dimensional space. Um, vector addition is the same. It's just exactly what you would expect. We add component by component. So if u has components u1 and u2, and v has components v1 and v2, in 2D, you've got u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. That's your new vector u plus v. In 3D, well now my u and v have to have three components. Um, U will have components U1, U2, and U3, because I'm in 3D. And V will have components V1, V2, and V3. And then U plus V will have three components too. Add the X components together. Add the Y components together. And finally, we add the Z components together. You see where this is going? If I'm in ND, my vectors have n components. So I go u1, u2, all the way up to u sub n. Then I have v, v1, v2, all the way through v sub n. When I add, when I add them, I get u1 plus v1, and u2 plus v2, and u3 plus v3, and I keep going until I get u sub n plus v sub n. Totally fine. All the math works out just fine. Um, length, or magnitude, this is fun. If v has two components, v1 and v2, the length of v just comes from taking those components, squaring them, and adding them, and taking the square root. Now we can prove that with the Pythagorean theorem, we could use it twice. That if I've got a vector in 3D, I just take the three components, I square them, and add them, and take the square root. Oops, cube, square it, not cube it. In ND, Do the same thing. You're just going to have n of them. Take the components, you square them, add them, and take the square root. That's it. That's 2D. That's 3D. That's nd. You can go backwards. What about 1D? What if our vector v had just one component? Is that the absolute value of v? I hope so. I know, this doesn't really make sense. You're like, it's a vector with a single component. It's a little weird. But you see the pattern. You've got one component. You square it and take the square root. Two components, square them and add them and take the square root. You've got three components, take, square them and add them and take the square root. No matter what you do to find the length, you take the components, you square them and add them and take the square root. It doesn't matter how many dimensions you're in. So all the math generalizes very nicely. Um, Nothing too scary. If you can handle this, you can handle this. No big deal. 
You need, I mean, it's a lot of arithmetic, but you can use a computer for that. That's what technology is for. Um, scalar multiplication. It's, of course, exactly the same. If u has n dimensions, c times u has n dimensions. Let's multiply all of the um, components of u by c. And u could be 2, so it'd be 2-dimensional. You could be 3, be 3-dimensional. It could be n, n equals 5. You could have 5 dimensions. That'd be fine. Um, scalar multiplication is the same. Um, we also have standard unit vectors. Um, beyond three dimensions, the notation isn't as standard as we would hope, but in 2D, we've seen our unit vectors, i hat and j hat. That's our unit vector in the x direction. And our unit vector in the y direction, right? 3D. Same thing. I've got a unit vector in the x direction, but now my vector has three components. And then I have the unit vector in the y direction, but now my unit my unit vectors have three components. And then I'm also going to have one in the z direction. It's one unit long and it points in the z direction. It has three components. Um, N D. Usually I see it with these E's. It's a with a little hat on it to, to note it's a unit vector, and sometimes you'll see some sub i, and this is for i equals 1 through n. So you're going to have e1, e2, e3, these are basis vectors, just mutually per perpendicular unit vectors. Um, and e sub i, that vector is just a bunch of zeros zeros everywhere until you get this, it says one. You're going to have zero, one, zero, and then you're going to have a bunch more zeros at the end. It doesn't go on forever. There should be zeros at the end. That's it. This is a, an i, or excuse me, a one in the ith position. That has an, a one in the first position. That has a one in the second position. That has a a one in the third position. That was a one in the, the last position or the nth position, the nth coordinate. Uh, coordinate, not coordinate, component, because we're talking about vectors. Um, everything holds. And it turns out um, all of these vectors in n dimensional space are also perpendicular to each other in some sense. I think that's kind of cool. You can talk to your linear algebra teacher about what sense if you're really curious. All right. Um, so that's where um, the similarities um, end, at least for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about um, the coordinate system in three dimensions um, and how these three standard unit vectors play out um, and just getting ourselves comfortable with the three-dimensional coordinate system that we use, which is right-handed. So stay tuned for that.